first time I attempted to try to cut myself. Second time I then tried to jump off a cliff, but I was still alive from that one, so. And then the third one, I then tried to hang myself. Australia's indigenous suicide rate is among the highest in the world. Young Aboriginals in particular are four times more likely to commit suicide than other Australians. Suicide is a relatively new phenomenon in Indigenous Australia. It's only been in the last 30 to 40 years that it has come about with a vengeance. As a nation, we need to actually stand up and say enough's enough. We can't accept these failures anymore because our children are dying. Aboriginal elders believe a disconnection from culture and land is driving the rates. I'm Yara Bumohan. On this edition of 101 East, we look at how some communities are fighting to save their young. Remote and picturesque. The Kimberley in northwest Australia. A vast area three times the size of England. These are the traditional lands of the Ungud Rangers. Oh, Their job to take care of the land. These indigenous rangers are using their bush skills for a biodiversity study. And it's a different bag. 30 grams. You get a saw ease puller. Yeah, they fight all the time. You want to hold it? Measure his tail. What it looked like a um, fun job. Like to go out and see different places that you haven't been and explore new things. Like doing biodiversities and all that. But recently, these rangers have had to acquire a new set of skills. It was a course like uh, to to respond on to suicide. Decided to take the training up to try and um, stop it in the community and in my family too. Lloyd Noel gets younger brother hung himself last year. The suicide sparked the Ungud Rangers to take up a suicide intervention course. I um, lost my little brother to suicide um, last year. Um, on my, we had my birthday. We just had a bar family barbecue and yeah, lost my little brother. He was um, 14 years old. Miss it. Derek Smith became a ranger to escape the pressures of living in his community, Moanjum. Oh, I spent most of my life in Moanjum and just being in one corner, like just doing the same thing over and over, just working and always just getting into bad stuff. And since I joined the rangers, I've seen more better opportunity out there and helped me a lot with stuff that I'd done bad and. I don't do that no more, like. Moanjum has a population of 350 people and is about eight kilometres away from the town of Derby. It's situated in the Kimberley. The week before we arrived, there had been another five suicides in the region. It's taboo to talk about death in the Aboriginal culture, to even say the name of someone who's passed away. But we've been invited to speak with people in the community of Moanjum. There's been more suicides there than anywhere else in the Kimberley region. Just about every single family has been touched by a suicide. Michael Ogilvie is a suicide response worker for the Derby and Moanjum area. 
He's been working here for more than 17 years. How normal has suicide become in this community? Um, very normal. I've had eight-year-old kids point out that this is their tree that they want to hang themselves off. They actually mark out their tree? Yeah, identified trees that they want to hang themselves off. And what's the rate of suicide in the Kimberley region? Uh, in the Kimberley region, it's probably up to 30 completed suicides in the last 12 months. Um, and that's at epidemic level. Tree stumps mark the spot where people have committed suicide. Serving as an eerie reminder of the untimely deaths. Families cut it down because they're like they don't want to see it. it brings back b bad memories about that night. Emma and Jungain's best friend killed himself here a few months ago. He was just 18 years old. If there's someone commit suicide, it affects the whole community, because like we all one big family. It's not the first time Emon has had to deal with the death of someone close to him. Yeah, well, um, when I was only an adolescent, my big sister committed suicide. I didn't know what for. I think she was just turning 18. I still think about it too. And the sound of suicide stirs him in his sleep. I just like hear people shouting in the night, saying, somebody help this person wanna commit suicide or hang, hang himself. Lloyd Nolgett believes a lack of opportunity is contributing to a downward spiral. There's nothing there for them but alcohol and drugs. There's nothing exciting or good for them to enjoy. Michael Ogilvy takes us to a popular spot where adults and children go to drink alcohol. Kimberley's alone, they drink three times as much alcohol than anywhere else in Australia. You know, a normal sitting for the boys to have a drink is 90 cans of beer. It's copious amounts of alcohol. You, know, you can't, and they'll drink that in, in a day. And then go back the next day and drink the same amount. They'll spend their whole wage on alcohol. And not even flinch. Terence James often finds himself in a drug and alcohol haze. We go out. Have a good time, you know? Get drunk. Smoke weed. Yeah. A few years ago, when he was high and depressed, Terence tried to hang himself. Is it here that it happened? Yeah. I was walking here, you know? Uh, with, a, with a rope. He takes me to the site of his suicide attempt. Oh, part uh, camp right here to help me understand how he was feeling that day. It was getting dark again. The sun was going down. I don't know, I was wasted, drunk in Christonia. In my, my mind, in my mind, I it just go blank, you know? The day now when I went over here to um, want to hang myself, I was getting wild. I don't know, it's just like nobody don't even worry about me, you know? And I was a bit hurt, you know, in my, in my soul. My father came along and just grabbed the rope and take me back home, eh? And, and, and what you doing that for, you know? What do you want to kill yourself for?
Northern Territory, where the youth suicide rate is three and a half times the national average. We're heading to an Indigenous camp to see how culturally appropriate methods are being used to heal and save their young. David Cole runs Balinyu, which means creation in the local language. It's about giving the kids a safe place and a culturally appropriate place to just have some time out, get away from things, clear their mind, share some tools with them, give them some seeds of understanding and basically help them work through the challenges they got and give them a safe place to just let things go. And how is it culturally appropriate? The, the biggest aspect of the program is cultural reconnection. It's getting the kids um, to build their self-esteem and pride through identity and culture. And that's the, that's the key component to the program. Balanyu runs six camps a year, each lasting for about a week. At this one, nine high-risk youths are being put to task. Making traditional weapons to help reconnect them to their ancient culture. Drawing on more than 40,000 years of history. With traditional dance. and smoking ceremonies to cleanse. All but one of these adolescents have thought of committing suicide and are recovering from drug and alcohol addictions. We can't identify them because they're underage, ranging from 12 to 16 years old, damaged by life too early, but hoping to heal. Well, the, you know, there's, um, you know, the violence, the broken families, the loss of identity, the um, various forms of uh, abuse, physical, mental, emotional, homelessness, substance abuse, drug and alcohol, uh, and that can be drug and alcohol around the kids, um, and, 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 and ultimately the kids being embroiled in that substance abuse themselves. Australia's first Indigenous psychologist Professor Pat Dudgeon says substance abuse is a symptom of larger social issues. I think that Indigenous people are still um, dealing with all the problems that are a consequence from colonisation. All of that pain has been left unattended um, and, and just manifested through the generations and that pain passed on to the children and so forth has led to the children that we have today who are at the end of that pain chain. They don't understand the pain. They don't under understand where it comes from and, and um, they don't understand why they must endure such pain. This 15-year-old, who I'll call Cameron, is one boy who wanted to end his life. My mum, she kind of made me angry. She just I don't feel like she loves me anymore. And that's how I feel. What do you do with that anger? Oh, smoke drugs, do bad things. And then I just hang with the wrong crowd because that's where you find the drugs and stuff like that. This is the activity. This is called rock and water. With a little help from nature, David Cole is trying to show these adolescents how to isolate their problems. If there's violence, broken family, if there's been past abuse, if there's been whatever it is, every challenge, every problem that bothers you or is on your mind, I want you to get a rock for it and I want you all to just make a, a pile along the edge of the water. The bigger the problem, the bigger the rock. How, does it, how, how do they feel? Is it hurting? Yes. It hurts, yeah. And that's what problems do. If you refuse to find ways of releasing it, you will have to carry this pain through your whole life. You have to learn, you have to be willing and learn how to let go, how to, how to set it free. Go ahead. If you keep it, that's your choice. If you throw it, you make a promise to yourself. 
Let it go, give it. Twenty one year old Jonas Lewin made a choice to let go of his problems after attempting suicide three times. It was a mess. But um all three times pretty I can't really remember because I was drunk, had a um, substance abuse and pretty much clattered. Um, grew up here all my life. Uh, rough history, just dad left when I was about 16 and um, made a lot of bad choices, hung around the wrong crew and uh, just got into a lot of mischief. That was five years ago. Today he's a trainee youth worker at Ballinu. Culturally, it helped me. It um, taught me to worry and to be more concerned about culture. Therefore, being stronger as a man, indigenous man. Young people need to be given messages um, that their culture is important and being shown cultural activities and feel that they're part of a community and a cultural community. So we're only going to do a small healing session, a meditation and just a, a smoking to finish for our last night. This is the Healing Circle, an indigenous version of a counselling session. We're just going to go through a very um, basic breathing meditation technique. In accordance with Aboriginal custom, the young boys aren't forced to speak at the Healing Circle, but they're encouraged to. Yeah, I just want to thank all the uncles for making it a fun time out here. First time I had for a while. Cameron says the camp has made him feel stronger. I came on the camp to like heal and um, be more confident about myself and um, respect others and myself. So learn a bit more about my culture. The challenge lies in keeping these boys on track after they leave the Ballinu camp. It's really hard. It's hard for us because um, probably about 30% of the kids uh, um, are our extreme high risk area. And they're the kids who tend to be deeply involved in substance abuse and the ones who are looking at suicide as an option to escape. Um, so with our lack of resources and lack of appropriate funding and support, we, we, can't, we can't do adequate follow-up. A week later, David tells us that Ballinu's funding has been drastically cut. They can no longer keep Jonas as a trainee and won't be able to run any camps next year. I am packing up after 12 years in this position. Marion Scrimjaw is an outgoing state minister in the Northern Territory government. She's skeptical that money from a controversial federal government package is reaching indigenous communities. Under the NT, the Northern Territory Emergency Response, there was nearly three billion dollars. That's significant taxpayers' money that's gone into what people think has gone into these communities. A lot of the money is spent on bureaucrats, consultants and other people fly in, fly out from these communities. Um, there is very little money that goes into programs and, and for, for working with families, uh, working with communities so that they can build and start dealing with the, with the trauma. She says she's leaving politics because she doesn't believe it's helping Aboriginals enough. How can I sit in this job any longer doing what I'm doing uh, when we've got eight, ten-year-olds, you know, young kids killing themselves, um, it's clear something is wrong. Our communities have got to start taking some, some you know, strong stands uh, because there's not going to be a generation left if they don't do it. We're heading east of Darwin to the picturesque and largely indigenous Arnhem Land. Just a few years ago, the community of Ski Beach had one of the highest rates of suicide per capita in the world. At its highest point, a group of elderly ladies decided to take matters into their own hands. Gabe 
Kaylee Marika Unipingu is a ski beach elder. She says it was the hanging suicide of a 21-year-old that sparked a cluster of other suicides in her community. He was the first one to commit suicide. The first one in this community? In this community. Gailey's younger sister also committed suicide. That was when her family took action, seven years ago, creating a volunteer service called the Manga Suicide Prevention Group. What do you do to prevent suicide in the community? Um, I walk. Me and my sisters, we walk the streets and listen for the noise, where it's coming from. The women run a 24-hour suicide watch often patrolling the streets with only small torches. They mediate in family issues and mental troubled youths. We follow up the next day, go to the house and sit down, have a cup of tea, have a cigarette with the person and sort of, you know, not in angry, but like in cancelling. Local police say the group's work has been invaluable. I believe that um, since they've begun operating that um, I don't think there's been a suicide uh, in their area. And these are the minutes? While suicide numbers have dropped, there's been a sharp rise in attempted suicides. Looking at the, the figures from say 2002 to 2008 where there was 40 odd um, to now in just this two year period, two and a half years, that there's 113. That's a significant increase. Shane Garawara's neck still bears the rope marks from his suicide attempt two weeks ago. Gailey's group intervened just in time to save the 23-year-old. The reason I've been doing this was because my biggest problem is with alcohol. Once I start drinking alcohol, I start losing control. I would think things like, my family doesn't love me and I want to go hang myself. I want to change my life, a better life, so that I can spend time with my son, go hunting and fishing with him, and do good things. They've got to bury us old people first, then us burying young people. That's why I'm still walking around, <laughs> saving, saving, talking to our young people. It's been a few days since the Ballinu camp, and we're meeting Cameron again. No, nah, I'm not drinking. No. That's it? Lost yeah, that much. age as well? Yeah, because I remember how much I used to drink. Not anymore. David Cole and another youth worker have come to see Cameron's progress. Cameron wants help to get on a drug rehab program so he can give up marijuana. When I was feeling sick from smoking the weed, I sat there, just kept doing the meditation. Since then, have you had any urge? No. Cameron sees a brighter future for himself and hopes to get an army cadetship. If you want to get into the army and follow that pathway, you've got to be drug free, you know, you, you can't have anything in your system. You know, it's a, it's a career that can look after you. Before I came on that camp, man, I reckon I kind of did help a lot because um, I would have done something very stupid. Yeah. So, but it was all just to someone else or to yourself? Oh, <laughs> whatever crossed me. <laughs> yeah. That camp now, what do you call it? Like, just that uh, lets you know that you can do better than what you have been doing. Like, you know, lets you know you can do better in life. Proud of you, man. So, so. Yeah. Really proud of you. Back in Moenjum, Terence tells me he wants to cut down the tree where he attempted suicide. I want to live till I get old, man. <laughs> I don't know. To me, that's a step of someone going forward, um, a positive move, um, that they want to remove something, a, f a symbol that, that um, they wanted to end their life with. In its own way, the community too is giving itself the space to heal. The trees where families, like people, commit suicide, we chop them down, but we don't actually kill it, because 
the time it takes to grow back gives us the time to get over it, forget about it. While suicide remains a scourge in Aboriginal communities across Australia, it appears that family and culture is Indigenous Australia's best hope for saving their young. Thank you.